It's a date with Judy. Hello. Hello, Judy. This is Oogie. Oh, hello, Oogie. Judy, could I have a date tonight? Oh, definitely not, Oogie. I've got a lot of homework to do and I want to wash my hair. And besides, I promised Mother I'd stay home. Oh, well, that's too bad. I was going to take you to the Jitterbug Joint for Junior. The Jitterbug Joint? Oh, that's different, Oogie. Pick me up at 8.30. That's Judy, folks. Judy Foster, the cutest date in town. Your date with her each Tuesday at the same time is arranged by the makers of Sun, famous quick relief for acid indigestion. Well, let's see what's doing at the Foster house. Judy, her mother, and her 12-year-old brother, Randolph, are in the living room. Judy speaks. Oh, it's so beautiful outside. It almost hurts me. Hey, you look like you got a stomachache. The sunset. Why? Judy, what's the matter with you? What do you mean, Mother? You have that look on your face again. Frankly, the love bug is bitten me. Oh, that's the busiest love bug I ever heard of. <laughs> By actual count, it's bitten you 14 times since January 1st. Oh, nothing else counts but this. Everything else was just sort of puppy love. Well, who do you love this time? A dog? Oh, <laughs> Randolph, you do say the most awful things to Judy. As a matter of fact, I'm not in love at all. It's only a slight interest. I just happen to think Kenneth McKenzie is the most gorgeous, attractive, brilliant, adorable man I ever knew. Well, that's a slight interest, all right. Well, <laughs> the important thing is, is he interested in you? No, that's the trouble. He's never even given me a look. Except in school today when I spilled a bottle of ink on him. <laughs> I bet then he gave you a look, a dirty look. Oh, I'll never get any place with him. Might as well face the fact. I'm hopelessly in love. Well, we're back to love again. Whatever happened to that slight interest? The phone seems to be ringing. Anybody you think I'm going to answer is crazy. Go ahead, Randall. I don't want people to think I'm always hanging around the phone waiting for it to ring. Why deceive people? Please, Randolph. It may be Kenneth McKenzie. That poor ink-soaked wretch. If it is, I'll eat my tennis racket. Oh, all right, Randolph. If you're going to be contemptible. Hello? Hello, Judy. This is Kenneth McKenzie. It is, Jeepers. Um, um, hello, Kenneth. I'm now eating my tennis racket. Would you give me a date tonight, Judy? Well, of course. Well, I'd just love to. Okay. Uh, will it be all right if I wear my baseball uniform? Your baseball uniform? Yes, on account of the ink is spilled on my suit, I can't wear it. And my other suit's at the cleaners. Oh, that'll be perfectly all right, Kenneth. I think you look just lovely in your baseball uniform. Okay. Uh, there's only one more thing. What, Kenneth? Will it be all right if we spend the evening on your front porch? Well, I kind of, I couldn't go anyplace in my baseball uniform. Well, I just adore spending the evening on our front porch. You must be loved. Swell. Then I'll see you around eight. So long. So long. Oh, it's really happened. He's asking for a day. What was in that ink you spilled on him? A love potion? <laughs> well, I'm glad you have a date with him, dear. Yes. Jeepers. Now what'll I tell Oogie Pringle? You have to tell him anything? Well, of course. I have a date with him tonight, too. Judy, you mean you're going to break a date with Oogie? Naturally. Oh, you treat that poor boy terribly. He likes it. Oh, jeepers, what excuse can I give him for breaking the date? Well, you can say you're engaged to be married. No, no, I told him that the last time. Judy, <laughs> you didn't. Yes, I did. Well, I'll just call him up and I'll think of something on the spur of the moment. The best things I ever think up are the things I think up in the spur of the moment. Well, I'm not going to hang around and listen to your torture, Oogie. I'm going next door to Mrs. Schluckhammer's for a few minutes. Okay. I'll hang around and listen to her torture, Oogie. Try and be gentle, Judy. I will, Mother. Have a telephone, Judy. Thanks. Wow, well, this is going to be good. Hello? Hello? Oogie? Yes? Oh, this is Judy. Yes, I know. Oogie? There's something I've got to tell you. Is it pertaining to our date tonight? In a way, yes. I've got to break it. Break it? Oh, Judy. I'm terribly sorry, Yugi, but I've got a very good reason. You have? Mm-hmm. The reason is, um, uh, well, the reason is... Here comes the spur of the moment. Well, why I have to break my date with you, Yugi, is... Uh, Randolph has the measles. Judy, I do not. Oh, that's a shame. Judy. And you know how contagious measles are, Oogie. And on account of I've been in contact with Randolph, I might be a carrier. Well, how do you like that? And you wouldn't want me to give you the measles, would you, Oogie? No, I guess not. 
Though I'd rather get them from you than from anybody else I know. Why, that's awfully sweet of you to say that, Izzy. Judy, I'm in the pink of health. I never felt better in my life. Well, so long, I guess. So long. I'll let you know when Randolph recovers. Bye. I'll let you know when Randolph recovers. Goodbye. Oh, Randolph, I had to say something. But of all the things there are in the world to say, why did you have to say that? It occurred to me, that's why. The darndest things occur to you. Well, you didn't want me to hurt Oogie's feelings, did you? I wouldn't mind. Oh, Randolph, you're utterly heartless. Me heartless? And you're the one who deliberately gave her own brother the measles. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Nothing, Mama. You have such a funny look on your face, dear. I know something must be wrong. Well, Judy Foster broke a date with me again. She did? Well, I always told you she was flighty. And I hate to say it, Oogie, but she's just not good enough for you. Oh, yes, she is. She's much too good for me. She's almost an angel. Well, I don't know why you don't like that nice Nelson girl. Her mother is such a good friend of mine. She has a mustache. That's absolutely untrue. Besides, it would be a simple matter to shave it off. Well, Judy had a very good reason for breaking her date with me. Her brother Randolph has the measles, and she... Oh, Dee, did you say Randolph has the measles? Yes, I did. My word, and your little brother was playing with Randolph this morning. Oh, well, I don't suppose... Where is that child? Robert! Robert! Oh, I'm going to put him right to bed. Robert! Yeah? You come right in the house this minute. My goodness gracious, he may be getting the measles any minute. Robert! Hello, Mother. Have a nice time with Mr. Schlitzhammer's? Yes, I did. But you know what happened? No. Well, while I was there, Mrs. Pringle called Mrs. Schlitzhammer. And do you know why? I'm all ears. Well, Mrs. Pringle broke a date with Mrs. Schlitzhammer this evening because her little boy is coming down with the measles. Yes. Yes. Well, there's getting to be a regular epidemic around here. Is there really? Well, I didn't know that. Oh, Judy, I'm awfully glad you broke your date with Oogie tonight. You are? Why, yes. Oogie's undoubtedly been in direct contact with his little brother, and... Why, Judy, he might have given the measles to you. Well, I'm sure the mothers of Judy's friends have enough to do without worrying about a measles epidemic. For if you're an American housewife, you're the busiest woman on earth. Your days are just hectic with washing, scrubbing, mending, marketing, cooking, and child care. And that's not half of it. No wonder you often have acid indigestion. What can you do about it? Well, here's what millions do. At the first sign of heartburn or excess stomach acidity, slip a couple of Tums in your mouth. Nothing to mix or stir. You don't even need water. Tums melt on your tongue like candy mints. And with unbelievable speed, they bring peace and comfort to an upset acid stomach. So be prepared. Night and day, at home or away, always carry Tums. For you never know when or where acid indigestion may strike. Get your Tums at any drugstore. Only 10 cents a roll. Three roll package for a quarter. And now back to A Date with Judy. Well, in order to break a date with Oogie Pringle, Judy told him Randolph had the measles. And when Oogie's mother found out, she remembered that Oogie's little brother had been playing with Randolph that morning, and now she's putting the child to bed. Just now we pick up Oogie talking on the telephone. Hello, is Mrs. McKenzie home, please? Yes, but she's busy at the moment. May I take the message? Well, it's a sort of personal message. Who's speaking? This is her son, Kenneth. Oh, hiya, Kenneth. This is Oogie. Oh, hi, Oogie. Hi. Uh, listen, my mother says to ask your mother, was your little sister playing with my little brother this afternoon? Yes, my little sister was playing with your little brother. She was telling us just a little while ago he kicked her in the teeth. Oh, well, then she's in danger. In danger of what? Well, she might have picked up a disease from my little brother. What? Did he bite her, too? Oh, it's not hydrophobia. It's measles. Measles? Yes, my mother says to warn your mother. On account of my little brother was playing with Randolph this morning, and Randolph has the measles. Who, Randolph Foster? Yeah. Judy Foster's brother? Oh, yeah, why do you ask? Oh, I happen to find that a very interesting fact. Judy, you answer. It's probably for you anyhow. Oh, it probably isn't. 
I kept count for a whole week once, and I figured out that only 49 and one-third percent of the phone calls in this house are for me. Well, I have a feeling that this call doesn't belong to my 50 and two-thirds percent. Oh, all right. But people must think I'm hanging around the phone all the time. Aren't you? Quiet, Randolph. Hello? Hello, Judy. Yes? This is Kenneth McKenzie speaking. Oh, hello, Kenneth. Well, uh, Judy, I, I don't know how to say this, but, well, I've got to break my date with you tonight. You do? Yes. My mother said I'd have to break it on account of the measles. The measles? Gracious, did somebody else have the measles? I don't get it, Kenneth. Well, we heard Randolph had the measles, and on account of you probably having been in direct contact with him, well, my mother thinks I'd better not be exposed to you. But Kenneth... I'm terribly sorry. Let me know when Randolph recovers. So long. So long. Well, what was that, Judy? He broke his date with me because he heard Randolph had the measles. Uh-huh. <laughs> Randolph the measles? Well, what on earth gave him that idea? <laughs> that's the funniest thing I ever heard of. Well, that's perfectly <laughs> ridiculous, Judy. Randolph's in the pink of hell. Uh, uh, are you, dear? Oh, I'm dying laughing, but outside of that, I feel fine. Oh, dear, your face <laughs> is rather red. Well, no wonder. Look how he's laughing. <laughs> Randolph, what's that spot on your face? Where? Right there on your chin, a little red mark. It's a measles. Oh, no, it isn't, Mother. I cut myself. I wish I were dead. Well, how did you cut yourself, Randolph? Well, I... Oh, all right. If you must know, I was shaving. Shaving? <laughs> well, I... well, I was in the bathroom, and there was Father's razor. Well, I just naturally... Oh, Randolph, you're much too young to shave. He hasn't got anything to shave anyhow. Is that so, Smarty Pants? I counted five hairs on my chin this morning. Two more hairs than I had a month ago. With a big job like that, you should have gone to a barber. Uh, Randolph, I, I want to ask you something. Have you been playing with Oogie Pringle's little brother, Robert, lately? Yeah, I was playing with him this morning. Oh, good gracious. No wonder Kenneth thinks you have the measles. Do you realize Oogie's little brother has the measles and Kenneth probably saw you playing with him and... Randolph, you're probably coming down with the measles this very minute. Now, Mother, don't look at me that way. Just let me explain. You explain you see, nothing. You get right upstairs and get into bed this very minute. Mother! I'm going to call the doctor. Judy, you certainly got me into a heck of a mess. Well, I didn't mean to, Randall. Here you know, I am in bed. I've had a doctor poking at me. It'll be me. a nice rest for you. But I don't need a rest, and you wouldn't let me explain. Oh, Randall, please don't tell on me. After all this excitement, Mother would be furious at me if she knew I was the cause of it all. Besides, don't you think I've suffered enough? You suffered? Yes. Having Kenneth break his date with me and all. <laughs> don't start laughing again. I don't think it's funny Kenneth broke his date with me. And he's so adorable. Oh, well, that's not what I'm laughing about this time. I'm laughing because Oogie Pringle's little brother has the measles, and now you can't call Oogie back and make a date with him again. Oh, I hear Mother coming up just Please don't tell me, Randall. Oh, okay. But if I have to take castor oil, I'll tell all right, all right. Oh, you probably won't. Shh, here she comes. What did the doctor say, Mother? Well, he said Randolph didn't have any symptoms yet. Yes. But he says since you've been exposed, you might break out any minute, and in the meantime, just to keep you quiet. And as for you, Judy... Yes? Yes, the doctor says since you've been exposed to Randolph, to keep you quiet, too. He did? Yes, so you go right on in your room and get into bed. Oh, Mother! Huh? Ha! Ah. <laughs> Oh, my, what mess. Hello? Hello. Is this Mrs. Foster? Yes, it is. Well, this is Miss Hazlett, Randolph's history teacher, you know. Oh, yes, Miss Hazlett. I was coming to the PTA meeting tonight, but uh, that's I... That's what I want to tell you. My car's all out of gas, and you live in my neighborhood, so I was wondering if you'd pick me up. Oh, but that's what I want to tell you. I can't come to the meeting tonight. Oh, you can? No, I'm afraid Randolph's coming down with a measles. Is that so? Well, I'm afraid there's a regular epidemic around town. The little Mackenzie girl has it, too. Kenneth Mackenzie's sister? Why, yes, I guess so. Why? Oh, no reason. My daughter Judy had a date with Kenneth tonight, but anyhow, it's broken. Besides, she's been exposed to Randolph measles, and I've got her in bed, so she couldn't go out in any case. Oh, this measles situation is really getting serious, isn't it? Oh, yes, I hear there's a terrible epidemic. I think I ought to call up Mr. Winfield and tell him about it. Mr. Winfield? Oh, you mean the principal of the school? Yes, I think with the measles this bad, the school should definitely be shut down. Hello? Hello, Kenneth. This is Oh, hi. Hi. Uh, Kenneth, 
What are you doing with me? Nothing. Look. Well, uh, the girl broke a date with me, and I just want to make a talk to you. That's so. I just want to make a date with you. You did? With who? Judy Foster. Judy? Oh, no. Yeah, it's what's so amazing about that. Oh, nothing. No reason. Who broke a date with you? Me? Oh, uh, Barbara Winsor. That's so. Yeah. Too bad. You know, Ken, I think I'm going to swear off you. Oh, isn't that a rather drastic step? No, I've given it a lot of consideration. I've made up my mind. Oh, I don't know. Women are very important in some ways. Now, it's Judy Foster, for instance. Uh, Ken, I just assume not talk about it. Why? Well, she's just not good enough for me. Ladies and gentlemen, if your stomach could talk, here's what it might say to you. Say, what do you think I'm made of? Cast iron? What's the big idea? You eat so fast, I can't catch up with my work. So I'm protesting, see? Acid indigestion is my way of telling you that I feel abused. And uh, heed that protest, ladies and gentlemen. Heed it, and the very first sign of upset acid stomach, heartburn, that uncomfortable, cool feeling, slip one or two tums in your mouth, just as you would candy mints. They work amazingly fast to neutralize the excess acid in your stomach. And let me say, Tums act in a different way from most other antacids. For Tums contain no soda or other water-soluble alkali. Therefore, they do not over-alkalize your stomach or cause an acid relapse. So be wise. Night and day, at home or away, always carry Tums. Only 10 cents a roll in a drugstore. But be sure you get Tums for the tummy, T-U-M-S. There are many imitations of Tums, but no substitute for them. And now, back to A Date with Judy. Aunt Judy is caught in her own trap. She broke a date with Oogie by saying Randolph had the need and word of an epidemic got around, and now Kenneth has broken a date with Judy. Moreover, Mother has sent both Judy and Randolph to bed. Listen. Hey, Randolph, what do you want? Come out in my room, man. I want to tell you something. Yeah? What's for? What's up? Mother was just upstairs a minute ago, and she told me they're closing down the school because of the epidemic. Hooray! Oh, you're so cheerful. What if they find out nobody really has them either? Yeah. We can't let that happen. Mm-hmm. You know what we've done? We've created an epidemic. What do you mean, we? We did it single-handed. What do you do? I'm going to call Mrs. Pringle and tell her you don't really have the needle, and then she'll know her little boy doesn't have it, and then Mrs. McKenzie will know her little girl doesn't have it, and the epidemic will be over. What? And let the school open up again? Over my dead body. Well, I've simply got to call off this epidemic. Keeping Kenneth and me apart. And I've simply got to keep this epidemic going. It's keeping school and me apart, and that's the way I like it. Oh, no, you don't, Randolph Foster. I'm going to tell Mother the truth. And admit you started the whole thing? My back is to the wall. I'll have to confess. Oh, no, you don't, Judy Foster. Oh, yes, I will, Randolph Foster. Stay here, Judy. Stay here. Mother! Mother! Come on upstairs a minute. I want to tell you something. What's wrong? Are, are you forgetting to get Simpson, Judy? No, that's just it. What are you talking about? Mother, I have to tell you the truth. Randolph doesn't have measles at all. Oh, he doesn't? No, the way everything happened was when I called Ooby to break my... Listen, listen, what's that going on? I don't know. It's Randolph. Oh, Randolph, what's wrong? Oh, I'm dying. I'm dying. So, your brother doesn't have the measles, Judy. Just look at his face. Oh, Oh, I've got fever. I'm burning up. Now I have chills. Oh. I'm freezing to death. Oh, you poor darling. Oh. Give me that other blanket, Judy. Now oh. I'll just tuck you up all warm, dear. Oh. Peter, that's funny. I was talking to him a minute ago, and there wasn't a single spot on his face. Oh. Now that's easy. Oh, you would break out all of a sudden. Oh. Now, baby, you just stay down under the covers. Now go right downstairs and listen some hot tea. Oh, thanks. But I'd rather have a, a ham sandwich. Don't be silly, dear. If you have a chill, hot tea will warm you up. Oh, yeah, but don't you think I ought to need something to keep my strength up? No, no, you can't have anything to eat, Dan. Don't forget the old saying, starve a fever and feed a chill. Hot tea is all you need. But I'm hungry. You're welcome, Bobby. I 
I will, Mother. I'll watch you very carefully. I'll be sure. Oh. Hey, Randolph, Mother's gone. You can stop groaning. Now, where did you get those spots in your face? Out of the McCurecomb bottle in the bathroom. You deliberately painted those spots in your face, I thought. Now, Judy, if you betray my measles and let the school open again, well, I'll get something worse. Mumps, maybe. You won't be able to paint mumps on your face. No, Randolph. I'm going to put the kibosh on this right now. I'll give you my answer. Mother, I want to tell you something. Mother! Judy, how could you leave that noise with your brother so weird? Look at He is in the I don't want to spill this hot tea. I know that there's something you've got to know. Oh, for heaven's sake. Judy, will you just... No. No, take your tea into Randolph while I answer the phone. All right, Mother. He does look ill, Judy. Be very nice to him. I'll be nice to him. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Stalker. Yes? Uh, this is Mrs. Pringle. Oh, Mrs. Pringle. How are you, little boy? Probably developing a symptom to strike his minute. And all I can say is, I don't think it's very considerate of you to let Ben Law play with him. Considerate of me? Well, Mrs. Pringle, if you really want the truth, I think you have no business letting your son play with Randolph. I love all the nerve. How dare you say that? If you have any brains at all, you keep Randolph, so he can give things to other children. Randolph gives things to other children? Well, how dare you say such a thing to me when you deliberately made your little boy give Randolph the measles? Well, you have to be ashamed of yourself saying a thing like that. Oh, how utterly ridiculous. Why, Randolph didn't have a sound of a measle until he played with Robert. Well, of course not. Where else is that? Randolph gets a measle to catch from Robert. But I thought, well, that's my story. Because Robert has not had a thing this morning. And he hasn't got anything yet. He, he hasn't. But, but I thought... I know. I thought Randolph had. Well, a moment ago I did too, but... Mrs. Pringle, I'm going upstairs a second and find out something. I'll call you right back. Hi, Mother. Oh, oh, I'm dying. I'll tell you in a minute if you are not. Oh, the pain is almost unbearable. Where are you going, Mother? Right to the bathroom. I'm getting a water bottle. What are you going to do, Mother? Wash your face. Oh, no. Oh, don't do that. I've got chills for oh, washing my face. Is kill me. I'll take that chance. Oh, no, no, don't. Don't. Well, I thought so. Please, wash rag. Don't about it. Please, you cure it so good. I'm awfully glad you found out. Mother, I was trying to say. Well, Randolph, what are you going to do, Mother? You're going to tell me to see if Robert can get up. Oh, butterfly. Then Kenneth's little sister can get up, too, and Kenneth can have a date with me tonight. Now I can get up too. Oh, no, you can't, huh? After the spanking you're going to get, you'll be in no condition to get up. Where's Judy, Randolph? Getting dressed for a date with Kenneth. Oh, what a day. I'm never so embarrassed in my life. Well, it's a perfect fool calling up Miss Davis and telling him to tell Mr. Winfield not to close the school. Well, that was the quickest epidemic this town ever had. Oh, that's what she said. Yeah, I'll let him in. Hello, Randolph. Well, blow me down if it isn't Kenneth. Hello, Kenneth. Good evening, Miss Foster. Come in, sit down. Thank you. Oh, no, no, not that chair. Take a good, comfortable seat. Judy always has a guy wait at least a half hour on his first date with him. Well, women are funny that way. Why are you staring at me, Randolph? I was just trying to see where you're adorable. Adorable? Yeah, Judy says you're adorable. <laughs> Frankly, Kenneth, after you looking over carefully. Randolph, tell your sister Kenneth. Hey, Judy. Judy, your gazook is here. I'll be down. You'll be down right away, Judy. You can see Kenneth waiting on your second date. Tonight you come right down here. If he does, history will be made at the horses. Oh, hello, Kenneth. History is made. It's so divine to see you. Yes, isn't it? You look just lovely in your baseball uniform. Um, how do I look? Well, you look swell. You, uh, except that... Except, except what? Well, those, those spots on your face. Spots? Judy, have you been using the Makira comb? No, why? Well, Judy, in that case, you've got the measles. The measles? Measles? <laughs> Uh, 
Well, we'll hear even more about the measles in a moment. But right now, uh, I'd like to remind you that you've got to be all there. Whether you're playing bridge or golf or buckle down to a desk, everybody knows that. And everybody knows that nothing will dull your mind more quickly than a bad case of acid indigestion. What's the answer? Well, I'll tell you one answer. Next time you get that uncomfortable pull feeling and heartburn, why don't you do as so many millions do? Try Tom. They're pleasant. They're positive acting. Handy, too. Nothing to mix or stir. Just slip one or two tums in your mouth as you would candy mint. And see how quickly your stomach feels calm and peaceful again. You know what? I'm telling you, millions, literally millions, night and day, at home or away, carry tums right with them. Just in case they get acid indigestion from overeating or oversmoking or from any other cause. Remember, tums are guaranteed to contain no soda. Get Tums at any drugstore, 10 cents a roll, three roll package for a quarter. Tums for the tummy, T-U-M-S. Now, back to the Foster's. Hello. Hello, Judy, this is Kenneth. Oh, hello, Kenneth. I'm terribly glad to call. Oh, think nothing of it. I just was, uh... Well, I was thinking we might have dates soon now that you're getting over them. Getting over them? Oh, Kenneth, I'm all better. I'm absolutely cured. Hey, that's wonderful. Oh, then I guess maybe we could have a date tonight. Would you like to go to the dance at the country club? Oh, Kenneth, I'd adore to. I just love to go to the country club. It's so nice and country and everything. You're sure you're all over the measles? Oh, yes. The doctor said I was utterly all over them. Well, then I'll see you tonight. Oh, Kenneth. There's just one small thing. I can't go. You can't? Well, why are you? Because now Randolph's got the Date with Judy is written by Aline Leslie, stars Louise Erickson and Dick Staple. Music was composed by Paul Sortel and conducted by Constantin Bakalenikov, to the courtesy of RKO Studio. The program was produced and directed by Helen Mack. Kenneth was played by Scott Elliott, who appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. This is Art Baker inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday at the same time to keep your date with Judy.